Some people have called 3rd Nephi the fifth gospel. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and 3rd Nephi, where Christ personally teaches, testifies, edifies, and lifts the people when he came to the inhabitants of the ancient Americas. I testify it's real. The, the Book of Mormon's witness that Jesus Christ is resurrected is real. I love the witness that he, got, that he gives them. First, they see him. They look into the sky and they see the Savior descending in clouds. And it's, it's marvelous. And then he allows them to hear his voice. He actually speaks to them. And he declares himself to be the light of the world. He declares himself to be the one that had suffered the will of the Father through his atoning sacrifice. It's me. It's Jesus. And then he says, arise, come forth handle me and see. And he gives them op that opportunity to individually touch the Savior, to hold him. He's not a spirit. He has a body. He's touchable. He's tangible. He's huggable. He, he just, he's lovable. He just, he's there. He's real. So they see and they hear and they hold. And then I think finally they have the witness of the Holy Ghost, the witness to their soul, in 3 Nephi 11 and 15, it records that they did see with their eyes, and they did feel with their hands, and they did know of a surety, and did bear record that it was he of whom was written by the prophets that should come. They knew. And now, because of their testimony, we too can know that Jesus Christ lives, that he is a resurrected, exalted being. The, the whole purpose of 3 Nephi is to add a second witness, or to quote the subtitle of the Book of Mormon, another witness that Jesus is the Christ. I testify that's true. As we study these beautiful, incredible writings from 3 Nephi, you'll get a chance to study his teachings on baptism, his teachings that the law of Moses has been fulfilled, and that we now live the law of the gospel, his teachings on contention, and that contention is of the devil. For verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. We need to avoid contention. And especially in a world where we're all fighting over the same roll of tissue paper, avoid contention. Let the spirit guide and, and be kind. But my favorite part of this first day visit of Christ in the Americas is found in 3rd Nephi 17. And I want to just bear a, a brief testimony of the, what a wonderful experience. They've had a long day. He's taught them. They've touched him. They've held him. They've heard him repeat the Sermon on the Mount that we're now calling the Sermon on the Temple. They've seen the calling of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and the selecting of them. And they've had his Sermon on the Fulfillment of the Law of Moses, his Sermon on the Lost Sheep. And, and it's been a long day. And so in, in verse 1 of 3rd Nephi 17, he says, go, go home. You're, you've had a long day, go home. And they look at him with, with eyes and tears and nobody says anything but just with long, P -p please don't go, please don't go. And he reads their minds and, and he says, okay, I'm going to stay. And then he asks what to me is a really interesting question. Verse 7, ha have ye any sick among you? Any, anybody here sick? Now, wait a minute. Earlier in that day, Hours earlier in that day, every single individual, one by one, came forward and had an individual experience with Jesus. People were lame, limped up to Jesus. People that had were, were had a withered hand walked up to Jesus and, and hugged them. People that were blind felt their way forward and, and touched him. He knows there are people that are sick. And yet he asks, have you any sick that are among you? And then he starts to naming. Let's see, seems like I saw uh, a lame man, a blind, halt, maimed, lepers, withered, deaf, afflicted in any manner. He says, do you guys want to come back? And he invites those to come back. And then one at a time, he heals them. He heals them individually. Why didn't he do that the first time? What's, what's the lesson here? You know, some of us struggle with, with all kinds of struggles, stresses and anxieties and depression and, and lame and halt and maimed. And we, we have all kinds of things that we struggle with. Why doesn't he heal us the first time? 
Why does he make us keep enduring? I think there's a lesson there about continuing to have faith, continuing to believe, continuing to stay, continuing to stay with Jesus. Will you stay with me when you're not healed right away? Yeah, you'll remember the great saying, do you have faith to be healed? Do you have faith even if you're not healed? That maybe is a, a test that Jesus was giving them. And then, and then 3 Nephi 17 gets even better. It says, one by one, he blessed the little children. He gives them, just as we, we learn from James, laying on of hands. Article of faith number five, laying on of hands. He blesses every child. And then angels come down. Fire from heaven mingling with them, but they're not burned. What an incredible experience. And, and they all got to, to see that and to be a part of that. They saw with their eyes. They heard with their ears. They touched with their hands and that embrace. And then the Spirit continued to confirm Jesus is a resurrected God, and he's one with the Father, united in serving and putting forth his work. I love the witness that the Book of Mormon gives, that Christ lives, that he's resurrected. I hope as we study Third Nephi that you will feel the power of that witness that Jesus Christ lives. That's the witness of the Book of Mormon, and he continues to be a God that's involved in individual lives. He knows us. He cares about us. He reaches out to touch us, to bless us, to heal us, and to give us faith and strength, even if the healing doesn't come right away. Incredible lessons. I hope you feel the Spirit as you study them.